man from the Pittsburgh Comet that broke this story, Bram Reichbaum. Bram, good to have you with us. Uh, it's very good to be here, Kevin, and I, uh, I must uh, congratulate you on what you just said. You have been asking the tough questions of city officials on day one, and it's, uh, you know, it, it, it's a habit that maybe none of us like to do because Pittsburgh is sort of a big, small town, and we like to give everyone the benefit of the doubt, and we like to try not, you know, our instinct is to not make mountains out of molehills, but eventually uh, you just have to face, face facts and look at, look at what's before you. And I, uh, you know, I congratulate you for, uh, or I thank you for reading the blog and for reading the, the newspaper and the news with a skeptical eye and, you know, speaking out for as long as you have been about what you've seen going on. Well, Bram, you and others on the blogosphere have done some incredible work, so much so that it has been recognized by the TRIB and the PG today your work on this case, um, why do you care so passionately about these issues? Some might say it's just a billboard, no big deal. Well, why do I care? Call me old-fashioned. Um, it's sort of a cornball concept, but I think uh, the rules and the laws are there to be followed. I, I think that the, the city, city zoning code, which... Um, you know, uh, some d development officials would like to dismiss as, oh, it's three inches thick of rules and it's going to get some way of doing business the way we want to do business. Well, that was written by the people of the city of Pittsburgh, expressed through, you know, city, city council and other public officials and what have you. And they're there to protect the people's rights and they're there to um, be followed. Now, when you're looking at this story, I mean, Yes, there were some gifts exchanged, and there are rules against, you know, one official giving another, you know, a gift like the surround system that was given. Um, it, I don't want to be draconian about no one's ever allowed to be friends with anyone. You know, no, if you work for the city, you're never allowed to talk to anyone who works for a business, whatever. I don't want to be that kind of person. But if you do have a close friendship, uh, if a development official or a public official has a close friendship with a business official, and uh, it's been admitted that there is. You, you need to, if anything, go out of your way to show you're not giving that business special treatment, that you're, you know, holding them to following the zoning code, uh, the rule of law, what have you. What we've seen in this situation is apparently, um, and, it, and it, has go, had, it has gone through, um, most the uh, URA director, Pat Ford, has been sort of the point man on this kind of operation, it's in that the, the zoning code and the rules have been gutted, have been thrown out. Let, let's not go to a, a city planning public hearing. Let's not go to a zoning board of adjustment public hearing. Let's, you know, cut, cut the rules and cut the people out of the process. So, I mean, that's the thing whenever you have to look at it and say, is this, you know, is this personal relationship that these people have? It, it, are, it is, you know, the steady drumbeat of little gifts, you know, really having an effect because, you know, as someone who maybe doesn't like to sign downtown, let's, let's, say, let's say I don't like to sign, I don't have that kind of access. I don't have that kind of, uh, you know, relationship in order to, to, to try my case. Sure, Bram, let's, let's give everybody the details here. What led to the resignation of the mayor's press secretary and his right-hand man being placed on a leave of absence? What did you do, what did you discover that led to, to this happening? Oh, well, uh, thankfully, one of our faithful... Uh, blog readers preserved a copy of press secretary Alicia Sirk's her own personal blog called Love of Care. This was sort of a personal diary of her husband Pat Ford's uh, professional exploit. Um, she had been writing it for about a year and a half, and when she became press secretary, she took it down. It was, you know, a little too much personal information on the web at that point. Well, one of our readers saved it, and uh, forward it along to my colleague, The Burger, who operates uh, the blog, The Bird Report, which I sometimes write for. And he took a look at it, and, um, you know, I'm not sure which of them put together the information that J.V. stood for Jim Velasic, who is the president, uh, not the president, but he is the top executive, regional executive at Lamar Advertising, which is in the news, thanks to this whole billboard matter, that had already been out there. Well, the burger wisely, instead of just running with that story, because we bloggers don't want to be tagged as irresponsible or, you know, not, not having high standards, like, you know, some would like to say that we don't, figured, you know, we really need to get the other side of the story on this. We should really talk to at least Alicia Sirk. So 
him being anonymous, yeah, he he uh, emailed me explaining the situation, said, why don't you, you know, call the press secretary, and I did that during business hours, and uh, she committed the cardinal offense of being extremely honest and forthcoming and said, yeah, that's uh, Mr. Vlasic. Yes, uh, Mr. Vlasic and Mr. Ford are uh, close friends. Uh, they go back some ways. Yes, they exchange gifts. Um, said, yes, um, you know, Mayor Luke Ravenstahl is also, uh, you know, uh, not only friends of Ford, but friends of Vlasic. Yes, uh, City Councilman Jim Mocknick has had a relationship with uh, uh, Vlasic as well. So basically that broke the angle that, you know, look, not only are we talking about uh, bending over backward for Lamar advertising, but bending over backward by people who possibly have, you know, ulterior motivations to do so. The whole, the whole arrangement just started to look so cozy um, at the top that now that city council members were getting sued over this, they were hit with a slap suit by Lamar. We figured out okay, sure. this is important enough to run with now. Well, so. well Graham, can you hang on for a minute? Sure thing. Okay, because I do want to talk about how this led to uh, the resignation of CERC and uh, Pat Ford being on leave of absence, and uh, you can weigh in as well at 412 333 KDKA. Kevin Miller, live in local news radio 1020 KDKA. Fred Hansberger's search for the truth. Hillary Rodham Clinton in an exclusive interview with uh, Larry Richard. And I did misspeak, you know, for the first time in 12 or so years I misspoke. No, no, I didn't say that. The truth starts here. So, I mean, in one sentence she contradicts herself. I was joking. Now, was she sleep deprived? For the most important. For us, joining us now is our good friend Bram from the Pittsburgh Comet. Uh, Bram, let's, let's talk about this. So, we've got uh, Alicia Cirk, the press secretary, done. Is it strange that this is the third press secretary in less than a year for the Ravenstall administration? Um, it is It is strange that uh, in the year and a half, I suppose, that he's been mayor, boy, has it been that long, um, <laughs> that uh, he, I, well, I guess he's now on his fourth press official, because from what I understand, uh, Jerome Zober, his chief of staff, has stepped up uh, into the role on in an interim basis. So uh, um, it strikes me as somewhat unusual in that the... Uh, you know, then there are other city departments where it seems like he goes through personnel at a at a fairly healthy clip. Um, and yet you have the public that still thinks that all is well, yet we have a lot of legitimate issues. I mean, if this would happen anywhere else, I mean, th this is a big story. You know, the play it's getting on television, in the blogosphere, on radio. I mean, both newspapers, it's the front page today. Yeah, well, I mean, Pittsburgh is a generous town by nature, and you know, you know, we want to, you know, we want to give people the benefit of the doubt. And uh, you know, moreover, we're told over and over again that you know, Pittsburgh is a, a, a strong mayor government. You know, you know, the mayor gets to make the rules and do what they want. And you know, you know, we do want to give people the benefit of the doubt. But I do think that uh, you know, um, we're also not a dumb people. And you know, after a year to two years, and you're starting to see people ask sharper questions and, and say what they're thinking in a, you know, in a sharper manner. And, right. and this Lamar situation really just, really just spread everything out on the table. Well, we've got about three and a half minutes left, so if we could mm -hmm. summarize, how did the disclosure that the press sector received gifts uh, of excess of 50 to, you know, 100 bucks uh, lead to her resignation and the resignation or not, or the leave of absence of her husband? Well, uh, Alicia might have had to resign because she had told the Washington Post that Luke Ravenstall was the Britney Spears of Pittsburgh. Um, I don't know exactly why she, why she was forced to resign, but we do know for a fact that there are there are uh, uh, state, state, and federal rules on the book saying that uh, the Britney Spears of Pittsburgh. Oh yeah, that was in the Washington Washington Post yesterday. It, it, it had to do with uh, what a. Uh, you know, what a good job Luke Ravenstahl is doing for Senator Hillary Clinton. And, uh, you know, because he's such a young, fresh mayor, he's getting all the youth votes to come out for yeah, they Hillary seem to be, instead of Barack Obama. But they seem to be enamored with the press releases there. Oh, uh, yeah, it, it is government by press release because, once again, it's sort of, you know, don't, don't look at what we're doing, don't ask tough questions. Just, you, you know, just be happy that we have a young, fresh-faced mayor and give the kid a chance. And, you know, that, you know that's sort of... You know how they want to get people to look past uh, you know, some of these issues, and and like I said, the the, the, the Lamar situation is just in, in the plain language of the rules. They they they, they violated about four, maybe five 
parts of the zoning code. And now news just broke this afternoon that they don't, even though all this business is going on and, and there was a zoning appeal today, they have no intention to stop building the electronic billboard. And they told city council that you're going to have to get an injunction from uh, the court of common pleas to get us to stop building it. Well, and it does, does, does raise the question concerning who's empowering Lamar Advertising uh, when you have the contributions and the free billboards they gave the mayor. Absolutely. Absolutely. What The unfortunate part about this is that, that it looks like the position of Lamar Advertising is indiscernible from the position of the mayor's office. And the position of both of those is we don't need your stinking rules, and in fact, city council you know not only are you wrong you need to be punished and stripped of things and slapped down for even even filing an, an appeal within the required amount of time which is something that any citizen has a right to do let alone a city council member yeah it is scary in the uh the charge today of collusion because the councilman had the appeal that that was worded similarly yeah i mean, I mean co collusion is a good word and from from what i understand there you know this is you know, another aspect of intimidation that gets used, uh, 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 for example, whenever they tried to limit the mayor's uh, uh, free reign as far as take-home cars, which is actually a similar issue, but when they tried to, uh, when they tried to limit the number of take-home cars that the mayor could give the people who we wanted to in his government, they turned around and said, well, we're, that means we're going to come after you, we're going to cut your staff budgets from around 80000 to 60000 so you're going to have to give your people a pay cut or lay them off. Yeah, it, it is uh, ruled by intimidation. Bram, if people want more information uh, about your investigation, what can they do? Uh, well, they can log on to my website, pghcomment.blogspot.com. They could log on to my good friend, the Burger's website, uh, birdreport.blogspot.com. And I suppose they can stay tuned to KDK 1020. Bram, you're a natural. Thank you, sir. <laughs> Thank you very much, Kevin. Always a pleasure. All right, take care. 1226 with Kevin Miller at News Radio 1020 KDK. The race for the